in the previous video we were able to draw this oval or wall in our frame now we need to be able to make it move back and forth in our frame so what I have here if we look back at filling the oval I have X and Y and then this is the width and height of the ball so I need to implement a method that is going to change these two numbers so an easy way to do this is to have a variable here static integer let me call it X and set it to 0 and then I'll have another static integer let me call it Y and set that as well to 0 or you know what let's have the ball a little bit in low in, my, in our frame so I'll say 100 this is just going to change the Y variable and I'm, I'm intending to make it move back and forth uh, because it's going to be easier than diagonally but diagonally is going to be the same idea but we'll change those two variables right now I'm changing uh, I'm intending to change only this now I'll start with my oval at X and Y and I will save this and let's see where it's gonna get placed now so it got placed right here now I need to make it move back and forth okay so I need to move it left to right and right to left so if I'm moving right, I need, I'll just have a boolean right here, static boolean. That is going to tell me if I'm moving right or not. So right. Let me set this to true because when I'm starting with movement, I'm going to move right. And then when I hit the edge, true right is going to be false and then I'm going to move the other direction. Okay. Now let's come right here and we'll implement a void method that is going to allow me to move that oval. Okay. Now what I will do is I will say public void or public static void because I want to use those variables and I will call this move. And for simplicity, let me just have it take a J frame. If this step is not necessarily you can you can always refer back to this but I'll have it have a J frame here just to be easier for us to read otherwise I can just take this out and deal directly with this variable now in this I will first of all I don't want to move it like very fast because eventually I will call this method in a loop and I want to be sure that I stop at some intervals okay so you can have this timer unit outside of your loop of your method and have it in your main method or you can place it in your uh, move method so I'll place it in the move method so if I decide to remove whatever code from my main method I don't have to remove that timer the timer I need the timer only when I'm trying to move and that is why I need to encode it right here so I will start with the try and catch block and in my try and catch block I will create what we call a time unit object and um, this is going to be delayed by milliseconds in my case and what I need for that is to call a sleep method so sleep and then I'll provide it with the number right here so I'll say okay sleep for five milliseconds and then execute whatever the code is going to be after this so what I'm doing right here is I'll say okay whenever you call this method hang on there for five milliseconds and then execute the code so this is going to delay the code and this is sometimes very useful in the loops remember if we print something in a loop it's going to print very very fast if I include this it's going to uh, execute the next ex instruction which is the next line after five milliseconds you can always change the time in here and um, set the timer for when you want it to happen so now what I'm trying to see if I if I need to move it left I need to increase X if I need to, I mean, from left to right, I need to move increase x. If I need to move it from right to left, I need to decrease x. So I will say, okay, if 
I'm in the position to move right, what I will do is I will increase X, but then I have to check whether I reach the end of my frame or not. So I'll say, okay, I'll check again. Now, if I get larger than what I need, so if X is larger than F dot, now, uh, how it, I, I have seen that I can get size, but I can also get the width. So I'll say get width, because I only need the width of the frame. So if this is larger than, if this happens to be larger than my width, I need to move the other direction now. So right is going to be not right. But now if I move it all the way, my ball is going to disappear before it hits the um, before after it hits the frame because um, when we started it's going to be zero zero here and then my ball is after it so if zero zero is here somewhere my ball is going to be after in this area so I need to keep in mind how big is it so in my case it's 50 so I will say okay I will take out the 50 which is the size of the width of my wall because I'm starting from the left part of my wall. So if this is the case, I'm gonna flip that boolean to um, the other way. Okay. Now let me get out of my first if condition and say, okay. Now what I need to do is if I need to move the other direction. Now I'll keep moving right to left until I hit the first edge. Now if I say I'm I'm not moving right, I need to take from X. So if I'm moving the other direction, I need to decrease X to get eventually to zero. But now what I need to check is when X reaches zero, which is when I go back to my original place I need to flip it back to move the other direction and for my exception I'm not gonna print anything um, for this application we shouldn't get any exception now after I move everything in here we know that I need to update my frame so what I will do is in my try block I will say f dot repaint because I need to update the frame otherwise I'll not see the change now the last thing I gotta do is I will have a loop inside my main method that is going to call this um, move method infinitely so I'll say while true which is the easiest way to have an infinite loop I will go ahead and call move on my frame that I just created right here and let's save this and let's run it. Now see the ball is moving. It hits the other frame. It moves back. And then it's going to keep moving back and forth. Now if I increase the size of this frame, it is going to keep moving until I hit the frame back again. Because I'm relying on the size of that frame. And I can just uh, go ahead and see. I can just decrease the size of my frame and then now it's going to be moving between this part of the frame I can go ahead and change this to 1 and see now the ball is going to move faster see now it's faster than before so this number is going to be the timer in which I will uh, do the next move Okay, and this is an easy way to move the ball back and forth now, a good exercise is to include Y in this move method. And uh, don't start with 0, 0. Just make it move randomly so it's going to move and hit this edge, then go like diagonally. So it's going to move and hit, keep hitting the edges up, down, left, right. And whenever it hits any edge, it should change direction to the opposite direction.